Welcome. This is the first of five videos on Chapter 6, Functions. We will begin by uh, talking about the concept of modular programming. In short, modular, um, the, the term module really means a component of a whole. So, modular programming uh, is about breaking a large program up into smaller, more manageable modules. In C++, those modules are small programs called functions. And a function is merely a collection of statements that perform a specific task. And the motivation is pretty clear. Um, maybe it's not, but the motivation is that it simplifies the process of writing programs. You can consider a module as a solution to a smaller part of the whole program. Modularity also improves the maintainability and when you work in the real world where you have multiple people working on a project, modules actually become work assignments for individuals. Here's what our programs look like. Initially we wrote one program that had everything inside the main. Upon reflection, you might say, well, it wasn't quite like this. It was more like this, and that we did some pound includes. And what you're including there actually are modules that are provided by the various libraries. IO Stream provided small programs that you used. When you say get line, that's a module. That's a function. So your program really consisted of the use of modules written by others plus your main program. Upon the completion of this chapter, our programs will begin to look more like this, where we have the customary inclusion of libraries, and then there will be modules that you write yourself that will be combined with your main. Here's a simple example of our um, use of modules from a library. From CMath, we use the square root function, and we know how that's done. You, you, when you use the square root function, you must apply a value, and the square root returns back to you the square root of the value that you provided. Uh, here's the second example where we're writing our first module ourselves, our first function. And this function is called sum. The goal of the function is to compute the sum of two integers. And the function looks like main, doesn't it? In main we say int main and we have parentheses. The parentheses indicate what information that has to be provided for the function to do its job. If the job of the function is to add two numbers, then you must give it two numbers. As we will see later, the data type of values is, is, plays a critical role in functions. Simply put, the function sum only works for integers. You cannot use this to add whole um, float numbers. So. Just like in, in main, we would always say return zero at the end. The fact that you say I'm producing an integer result means you must return the result. Let's see what this program looks like. So here's the program. It looks like that. <clears throat> here's the function. And we're going to call it, we're going to call it, uh, we have two numbers that we're working with, and we're going to call it and see what happens. So let's run this. And let's take the time to see what we have here. Let's skip this. I think I'm jammed up. Okay, I, I need to point out something to you. These 
programs here are in the public repository. So you have the ability yourself to pull these out and to run them and, exp and play around with them as we go through the lecture notes. Right. Now here's another example of another function. Uh, it, from, the, from the C++ libraries, we get getLine, and we call getLine. And notice that getLine, we know what it does. It reads a value into the string s. So it's a different kind of function that it does not return a value to you. It changes something instead. It changes this variable. There are other functions like display where its job is simply to display a string. It doesn't produce an answer, it just displays the string. And the function for that is guess not. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. Now a module has these characteristics. It has a job to do. It has raw materials that it works with. We call those things parameters, and they must be provided in order for the module to do its job. And the module may produce results. Um, and C++ functions that implement modules require documentation, so there should be a comment that explains what the function is, what it does. There should be a line that explains in detail what the raw materials have to be and where the results are provided. And finally, there must be a body that is actual code that um, performs the transformation of the raw materials into results. And again, we've seen the example of some. The raw materials are two integers. The transformation process is to add them together. The delivery of the results is accomplished by the return statement. Notice that whenever you call sum, it produces a value for you. So if I see sum here, it's going to produce a value. What do we call things that produce values? We call those expressions. So calling this function um, is an expression because it results in a value. Therefore, the call to the function can occur anywhere that an expression is required, such as in an assignment statement or in, in an output statement. Okay. Now, there's three terms about functions you need to get used to. One is called the function prototype. The other is called the function definition. The prototype is in many respects just a declaration without giving details. So, the function has to specify the name so in this case, we have a function called big, one called sum, one called print headings. has a return type. In this case, big is going to give you the larger of two integers. This is going to add two integers. And in the case of printing a heading, you don't return an answer. You, you cause something else to happen, namely the display of data. So the return type in this case is not a value. So we say the word void to say there is no return. Uh, the prototype also makes it clear how many parameters you have, how many raw materials must be provided. For example, for big, how many? Here's the first one, here's the second one. The comma separates them. So there's two parameters. There are two parameters here. Down here, there are none. So you can have... Uh, you're not required to have parameters. The function definition consists of a header and pretty much the same information that you would see in the prototype, uh, followed by a body. So here's the example. Here is the header, int domain. Notice that in the prototype, all the prototypes are terminated by a semicolon, which says that's all I want, that's all the information I'm giving at the moment. The header, on the other hand, says that 
This is the beginning of the definition. I do not put a semicolon. Instead, I put a block. And this block is called the body of the function. Okay. So, in short, the definition of a function has a header followed by the body. All right. Notice this is a header, no semicolon. Header, no semicolon. And the reason is simple. The header will be followed by the body. All right. Here's some scope rules for functions. Functions like variables need to be declared before they can be used. How do you declare a function? Declare either by giving the prototype, and that's all, or by giving the definition. So in your code, you can have prototypes followed by calls in the main, followed by the definitions. The prototypes declare them so I can call them in the main. Or your program can be structured to have all your definitions first, followed by the calls in the main. Or finally, your program structure can be the prototypes, the definitions, and then the calls. It's customary to do it this way. Prototypes. They don't take up a lot of space, followed by the main, followed by the definitions. Okay? That marks the end of our first.